Perpetua and Felicitas were two third-century Christian martyrs. Their story is told in the Passion of St. Perpetua, St. Felicitas, and their companions, and regarded as one of the great treasures of martyr literature, a document which is said to preserve the actual words of the martyrs and their friends. Vivia Perpetua was a well-educated young noblewoman of Carthage, a city in North Africa. Her mother was a devout Christian, and her father was a pagan. It is believed that she was a widow, for she also had an infant son. Perpetua was interested in learning more about Christianity, and her mother helped her to learn more about this religion. In the year 203, she decided to follow her mother's footsteps and become a Christian by faith. It was very dangerous being a Christian in those days, as the evil Emperor Severus persecuted anyone who decided to follow this religion. Perpetua had a younger brother, and when he learned about his sister's interest in Christianity, he too decided to become a Christian. Her father, who was a pagan, was very angry at first. He punished her by locking her up in a room and starving her. When he realized that she was not going to be scared, he decided to reason with her. He tried to talk her out of her decision. Daughter, have you given any thought of what would happen to your son if something were to happen to you? Father, do you see this face here? Yes, I do. Could it be called by any other name than what it is? No. Well, so I, too, cannot be called anything other than what I am, a Christian. At this, her father was so angry that he quickly left the room. Perpetua was left alone for the next few days, and during this time, she got baptized. At the time of her baptism, she was told to pray for nothing but endurance in the face of her trials. She was known for her gift of the Lord's speech and receiving messages from God. A few days later, she was arrested and put in prison. I was terrified, as I had never before been in such a dark hole. What a difficult time it was! With the crowd, the heat was stifling. Then there was the extortion of the soldiers. And to crown all, I was tortured with worry for my baby there. Perpetua was arrested with four other catechumens, including two slaves, Felicity and Revocatus, and Saturninus and Secundulus. The young slave, Felicity, while being pregnant, was even worse off, for Felicity suffered the stifling heat, overcrowding, and rough handling by the soldiers. Despite threats of persecution and death, Perpetua, Felicity, and their companions refused to renounce their Christian faith. Then, Tertius and Pomponius, the blessed deacons who tried to take care of them, bribed the soldiers, allowing them to go to the better part of the prison. There, her mother and brother were able to visit Perpetua and bring her baby to her. Then I got permission for my baby to stay with me in prison. At once I recovered my health, relieved as I was of my worry and anxiety over the child. My prison had suddenly become a palace so that I wanted to be there rather than anywhere else. One day, her brother told her to pray for a vision to show what's in store for her next. Perpetua, who spoke to the Lord often, told her brother she would tell him what happened the next day. That night, she received a vision while praying. I saw a ladder of tremendous height made of bronze reaching all the way to the heavens. But it was so narrow that only one person could climb up at a time. 
To the sides of the ladder were attached all sorts of metal weapons. There were swords, spears, hooks, daggers, and spikes. So that if anyone tried to climb up carelessly or without paying attention, he would be injured. At the front of the ladder lay a dragon of enormous size, and it would attack those who tried to climb up. Satyrus was the first to go up. He arrived at the top of the staircase, and he looked back and said to me, Perpetua, Perpetua, I'm waiting for you. But take care. Do not let the dragon bite you. He will not harm me, I said. In the name of Christ Jesus. Slowly, as though he were afraid of me, the dragon stuck his head out from underneath the ladder. Then, using it as my first step, I trod on his head and went up. Then I saw a beautiful vast garden with a tall man with white hair dressed like a shepherd and milking sheep. And standing around him were many thousands of people clad in white garments. And he raised his head, looked at me, and said, I am glad you have come, my child. He called over to him and gave me, and gave me a mouthful of milk. And all those who stood around said, Amen. Perpetua woke from her dream with a sweet taste still in her mouth. At once, she told her brother what happened, and together they understood they must suffer during the times to come. Meanwhile, Felicity was also in torment. There was a law which forbade throwing even a Christian woman to the wild beasts if she was with child. Felicity was afraid that she would not give birth before the day set for their martyrdom, and her companions would go on their journey without her. Thanks to her prayers, two days before the execution, Felicity gave birth to a healthy girl. She was later adopted and raised by a family in Carthage. The officers of the prison began to recognize the power of the Christians and the strength and leadership of Perpetua and Felicity. In a few days, they were taken for a hearing to the governor, Hilarionis. Have pity on your infant son. Offer the sacrifice for the welfare of the emperors. I will not. Are you Christian? Yes, I am. How dare you? You and the others are condemned to be thrown to the wild beasts in the arena. That will teach you and all others who wish to follow your religion a lesson. The four new Christians and their teacher went to the arena with joy and calm. Perpetua and Felicity, in usual high spirits, met the eyes of everyone along the way. We are told she walked with shining steps as the true wife of Christ, the darling of God. Perpetua and Felicity were to face a maddened cow, also known as a heifer, as an insult to their womanhood and their maternity. Strangely enough, the audience, screaming for blood, though it was, yet was touched by the sight of these two, so young and so valiant, and the people shuddered. Perpetua called out to her brother and other Christians, Stand fast in the faith and love one another. Do not let our sufferings be a stumbling block to you. When the heifer failed to kill the brave women, the soldiers were ordered to strike them down. Felicitas was struck down first, then Perpetua but only after the nervous swordsman had struck her once and failed to sever her head. The second time, she guided his sword with her own hands. It was as though so great a woman, feared as she was by the unclean spirit, could not be dispatched unless she herself were willing. 
Ah, most valiant and blessed martyrs, truly are you called and chosen for the glory of Christ Jesus our Lord. And any man who exalts, honors, and worships his glory should read for the consolation of the church these new deeds of heroism, which are no less significant than the tales of old. For these new manifestations of virtue will bear witness to one and the same Spirit who still operates, and to God the Father Almighty, to His Son Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom is splendor and immeasurable power for the ages. Amen. viewers, I just wanted to take a moment to request you to pray for us and donate if you can. If you can donate just $5, Christian Kids TV can keep making more videos like this. If you are not in a position to donate, then do pray for us. In fact, prayer support is very important to our mission. Thanks for your time, and we hope you enjoy the video.